Hey guys, so basically I'm not going to my grandpa and grandma's this weekend. I meant to record this yesterday, but I was just really tired that day. Because I did a lot at school at a small period of time. So I was really tired that day. Went to bed really early and woke up really early this morning. But yeah, as you guys can tell on my screen, we're reacting to a PS5. I have not, I haven't gotten an answer to my PS, uh, to the PS5 yet, but once it does get an answer, I'll record a PS4 video because all of my games other than a few games can actually play on my, um, play on the PS5. So yeah, that's very cool. So I don't have to buy any PS5 games. So let's just start reacting. Pretty special video because it's the PlayStation 5. And I'm very excited for it because I've been waiting for this thing for a while. And not only that, it's quite hard to get your hands on one these days. So in this video, we're going to unbox it and set it up and play some games. All right, so let's get to it. Sorry, I didn't mean to pause it right there, but... So basically, I... Dang it, I lost my train of thought. So, I, once I get a PS5, I am going to be recording it. Like, I'm not joking. I'll record, unboxing it, setting it up, um, downloading a few games, and then, and then ending the video there. should take either 20 to 30 minutes. No longer than that. If it's longer than that, I'm going to cut off the video. So I've been a Sony PlayStation fan for a long time, ever since the first one came out. I've been a fan since I got since the PS4 came out, and that was like what five, six years ago. So yes, I've been around that long, but it's very exciting to see the fifth generation. And what's cool about the PlayStation is that it's always been very innovative and ahead of any competition so far. So this is the box that it comes in. It's actually larger than you would think, or at least compared to the other consoles. So we got a nice picture there in the front, a little view of the remote, the logo it does say 8K, 4K, 120, and HDR. And the 8K here just shows the capabilities and the future proofness of of this machine which I think it would probably be used more for streaming and I would obviously much prefer the 4k 120 frames per second gaming so flipping out on the side we have a little contents on the bottom everything that's included and this is the back of the box play like never before we can see how the ps5 can lay on its side which I'm not a fan of I definitely would tower it lightning speed SSD breathtaking immersion with the controller and that's what's quite exciting about this next generation is the controller because it has haptic feedback and apparently there's some kind of 3d audio technology also and of course we get pretty amazing uh, games from playstation that are exclusive and also very backwards compatible with the playstation 4 which is very important and one thing that might be a little disappointing is the 825 gb storage even though it's fast it's a little bit small for today's standards and the newer games being much larger these days but the good part is is that it is expandable in the future and also with this disc version hopefully we're not going to be worrying about that as much because we're using a disc to store some of that data unlike the digital version that this also comes in all right so let's go ahead and open it up you guys can see on the top we have a handle to carry very nice there's only one seal on the top 
it. So it looks like there's just a paper outer shell and there's another box inside. So very interesting packaging. We got a little logo here, a little tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it and see what happens. And so this is how the PS5 is packed. So there's like this carton foam around it. Well, it's like a paper carton. So definitely not the best packaging I've seen, but it seems to work, I guess. It has pretty good protection, seems like. And here's a little close-up view of the carton, if anyone's curious. And then we just got plastic wrapping all around it, which reveals the console itself and oh, wow first impressions it's definitely much larger than i anticipated it's quite tall now it does feel quite plasticky not technically expecting too much out of this we do have a really nice little cutout for the logo here on the top and it just has a very sweeping interesting design and right off the bat i am definitely not crazy about the glossy black in the middle it's not bad looking by any means but it feels somewhat outdated already all right so so let's set this to the side for a second and see what's in this box. So it just pops open. We got some paperwork. Looks like a quick start guide and some kind of safety guide. And the quick start guide is quite useful. Kind of shows you how to hook everything up and all the ports and things like that if you don't know what you're doing. We get a two prong power cord and it's about four and a half, five feet long. A USB cable for charging the controller and it is USB type C. A high speed HDMI cable, which by the way, you definitely want to use. Don't use your old HDMI cable because it won't be completely compatible with the PlayStation, which requires a high speed HDMI. And now for the best part, the controller. And this is definitely probably one of the most exciting parts about the PlayStation 5 is the controller. And wow, it feels really good. I like the extension extended length here or at least it feels like it is and it just feels pretty premium and this is what you usually expect out of PlayStation is that more of a premium feel they definitely deliver on the controller looks like they took the time and engineered it very nicely so we do still have the touchpad here in the middle and it's also like a button there's a speaker a PlayStation button and then another button below that and that looks like the microphone so controller also has a mic now which is pretty cool because it gives you the option to use this instead of like a headset so underneath we have the charging and the headphone jack port so we can see that it uses a usb type c charging and it just looks really clean and feels really really nice so there is a new functionality with this controller where it pushes back on you with some haptic feedback so it'll be nice to see how that works and how it feels when playing a game so that was pretty much everything for the box except for we do still have a stand support the PlayStation either vertically or horizontally, which is quite interesting. And the stand itself does, you know, feel pretty cheap and plasticky, but I guess it does its job. And not only that, it is somewhat functional. When you spin it, it reveals the little bolt here that pops out that you use to secure it in the upright position. And when you don't need it, you can put the bolt back in there so it doesn't get lost, turn it, and it locks it away. Yeah, so that's everything for the box. So pretty well packed and includes everything you need to get started. So looking from the back, we can see how thin it is and it kind of widens up as it goes down. Pretty unique and interesting look. This definitely will draw attention if you have it sitting, you know, on your cabinet somewhere for sure. But here we can see we have two USB ports, an Ethernet port, an HDMI output port, and the power port. So this is what the bottom of it looks like. At the front of it, we have a power button. It looks like an eject button, a USB type C port, and a USB type A port. So the USB type C is very good for high speed external SSDs and the A port is good for everything else. So this is where our CD will slot in. Now there is a bowl chair for the desk version. The all digital version is actually quite thin and it looks the same as the other side there. But I feel like with the PlayStation, you definitely want the disc version. And the reason why is because the PS5 is still unique to keeping to its core of being a gaming machine, not requiring you to be connected to the internet at all times like the Xbox. And I definitely like that a lot. And I feel like by putting themselves more available to the console player, and especially if you have a lot of discs and you don't want to connect online for whatever reasons, the PS5 with the disc version makes way too much sense. So for what it is, I would not even consider the digital 
digital version over the desk version, at least at this point in time. So on the desk side, this panel here is quite clean. Nothing too interesting here. So we have a pretty like matte finish on the outside of it. But if we look, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it too well, but on the inside of it, it's got a grainy pattern and it's a bunch of those little X and triangle and O patterns inside of it. It's quite unique. So yeah, as it stands by itself, it's quite a head turner and definitely looks very unique. I like this logo here. It's completely cut out and looks very nice. So let's go ahead and try out the stand the horizontal way, which just clips on and you guys can see there's two little hooks here and it should just hook onto the end of the PlayStation and then we can lay it down. Okay, I think I had it on the wrong side. The CD actually goes down, looks like maybe. I don't know. Okay, yeah, that looks like it's more correct. So it's like a support underneath it that kind of holds it up, you know, because of its weird shape. So if you wanted to put it somewhere in some cabinet or somewhere where it takes up less room, you'd have to, you know, use that little stand for that reason. Now, I don't like the way it looks like this or even want it like this, so I'm not going to use it like that. We're gonna stand it up vertically. And what's interesting is you don't even have to use the stand if you don't want. I think you will get a little better airflow from the bottom if you do. It already has a little step here where it can get airflow with no issues. But if you do want to install the stand, it does go on it just like this perfectly. And these two little clips actually hook to the back of it, if you guys can see that. And then that bolt that we saw earlier screws into here. You pop out this little cap here. and it's. I will use that just because I want, like... It's stabled behind my TV once I do get one. <sighs> because it's like... Obviously my PlayStation 4 back there is not... I already fell like four different times. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna definitely do that just to staple it and make sure it's like safe. But... If it doesn't fit there, I'm going to move my TV a little bit more that way and then fit the PlayStation down there or back there. First through to hold it to glue it together. So depending if you want to use the stand or not, you can permanently install it if you wanted to. To be honest, I like it without the stand. I feel like it looks more modern and more clean. All right, so for the next part, let's go ahead and compare the PS5 to the old PS4. This is not the Pro, so it is quite a bit thinner and smaller. And you guys can see how much larger the PlayStation 5 is. Quite a bit larger. And honestly... Yeah, but the PS4 is much fatter than the PS5. I'm just saying. Sure, the PS5 might have four, uh, more stuff in it, but the PS4 is still pretty cool. I wish, you know, it was smaller, the PlayStation 5, because this does make it quite limiting in where you can stick it. Like, this thing, you can stick pretty much anywhere in any cabinet, or stand it up, or lay it down, or, you know. But it becomes quite a bit of a challenge when you're going to have to decide where to put this huge thing. So, yeah. Where I'm putting that is either, like, next to my PS4, when, if I don't have time to put it at my grandpa and grandma's, I'm going to put my PS4 either on my, not, no, not under my bed, like, maybe next to my cage, either next to my TV, or if I decide to, like, like, put it on, like, the PS5 on the side, I'll put it on top of it. Just for reference, you guys can see the differences, and, you know, they're quite large. All right, so for the next part, let's hook up the PlayStation to a TV. I brought this 4K 40-inch Vizio V-Series TV. It does do 4K at 60 hertz, so it's pretty reasonable for this thing. So I went ahead and connected the power and the HDMI to the television. So all we got to do is plug it in, and then the power cord on the bottom. And we'll set the PlayStation here on the side somewhere. All right, so let's go ahead and hit the power button on the PlayStation. And I can see some blue glowing right here, very cool. And it powers on. And it does say 4K HDR right away. And check out that boot up screen, very cool. Wow, that looks really nice. Sorry for the, sorry for saying this, but yeah, we're not stupid. <laughs>
Oopsie. So right off the bat, impressive because it's displaying the introduction in 4K HDR already. Now this TV is not great with HDR, but it does okay. So it looks like it wants us to plug the controller into the PlayStation. So let's grab our USB. So like how I said, I'm gonna buy the controller and if my 10 feet orange charger fits it, then I'll control, I will charge the, the controller that I'm gonna buy once I get an answer from my mom, which I will record a video about my PS4 and then I'll record about getting the controller and see how it is and how it feels. Look how that guy did, like he's showing you the controller and how it feels, I'll do the exact same thing. The cable that was included, we'll plug in the one side to the PlayStation and the other side, which is the type C in the controller. And then we're gonna press the PlayStation button on the controller. And now it's asking us to- Once I get the PS5, I'm gonna exactly do that, but I'm gonna charge the controller first. That means I'm gonna have to, well, I could plug it in and see if it fits while I'm waiting for that controller to charge, but yeah, let's just continue. We choose our language. So we're gonna click English. And by the way, it was talking this whole time, so we can go ahead and choose to turn that off because I don't think I want it. So here we're gonna- I'm gonna turn that off because I usually don't play online at all. Set up our internet connection. So we're just connecting. The only game that I usually play online is War Phase. If you guys remember War Phase, I recorded that video about a year ago when I did have COVID. So, yeah. It's that gun game called War Phase. It's basically like Call of Duty, just name differently. To our router. Okay, connecting. All right, so it looks like we're connected. It's asking us to adjust the display if we need to, and we do not because it's just fine the way it is. Okay, now we're gonna be adjusting HDR settings. So we need to adjust it up or down until we can barely see that sun image there. So I'm gonna leave it about right there. And here, once it's adjusted until it's barely visible, choose that. So here it's saying if you have a disc game that you wanna play, it can go ahead and start installing it while you're going through the process. Which I'm probably most likely gonna do here. I'm gonna be right back, choose what game I wanna do. It on. I'm probably gonna do either a Lego game or like a little short game that I always play. Or like a simulator game. So I, I am back, I'm going to show you what game I'm going to do that, because I'm going to do the exact same thing that he's doing it, like I'm going to do, like record the tutorial, and either blur out or pause the video if anything comes up, like a password or email coming up, because I don't want to show that on YouTube, but the game that I probably want to download is Hello Neighbor. It's because I don't play it much, or it's because it's becoming a lot glitchier, or like, I think it's about to not work in a few months or a few years, pretty sure, so I'm gonna try it on the PS5. So we're gonna just put that over there. I'll just put it in my box when I'm done with this video. So we're just gonna skip this for now. So here it's asking our time. So depending on where you live, you're gonna choose that. So here we can control our power options. I'm definitely gonna go with the low power use because where I live, power is extremely expensive and I don't want the console constantly running if it doesn't have to. We're gonna agree to terms. Yeah, same here. My mom's having power, like power bill issues. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So, my, so when it's not on like the power, 
So basically, what it's trying to say is when you choose low power, when you turn it off, it doesn't do any power. Like, it doesn't use any power when it's off. Then when you turn it back on, it will use a little bit of power. If you put it in medium, it's what my PS4 uses. It's on. It's like, it's on when it's off. And then when you turn it on, it's obviously on. But if you use it high, it's all the way. It's always on. Completely on. <clears throat> so here we can choose to update the software, which I think it probably needs to be done. Now, I'm not sure. So I'm probably going to go ahead and do that because this is a new console. And we want to make sure, you know, we get the latest. Yep, I'm going to update it immediately. The software, just in case there's any kind of bugs, it'll be ironed out. So we'll click on update and see what happens. It is quite a large update, but we are downloading it extremely fast, surprisingly. Wow, so it finished downloading and now it's restarting. So it's going through a few, I guess, software updates and it's turning on and off itself. So we'll just wait till it's done. And so far it's very quick. It's only been a couple minutes. All right, so it looks like our update is done and that didn't take more than about three to four minutes. So when I do update that and it does take a long time, I will definitely make sure that my Game Boy's charge and probably play it while I'm waiting for that. Because if I switch like to watch some TV and if I don't know if it's like, done and i'm pushing random buttons might mess up the tutorial thing and the settings very impressive so i'm gonna push the playstation button on the remote so it looks like the controller itself wants to update also let's go ahead and do that so it wants us to sign in to the playstation i guess app i'm gonna skip this for now do this later so here we're gonna choose an avatar yeah i'm gonna skip that but if i do Pick an avatar, which I will. It would either be Peter Parker or Miles Morales, or even like a villain from Miles Morales or Ratchet and Clank, or even the PlayStation 5 little robot thing. I'm gonna either pick those three things. Star that we want to use, and looks like they got quite a few to pick from. I guess we're just gonna go with Astro. The username. Just Vlad. Okay, I don't think it likes that I used a space. I'm gonna use, like, my PlayStation user. I think it's either Jaden6577 or Jaden6577. Let's just do that. Because in mine, like, my PlayStation, it's Jaden5677777777. So I don't want it that long. So I'm just going to change it to Jaden5677. Let's try that. All right, so that's good. So here it's asking about collecting data. I'd like to choose the limited data. All right. And there's our welcome. Okay, so it looks like this is the main menu. Very cool. Then after that, I'm going to make an account for Jackson in the process of that. And then... Like, I'll pause the video when I am making Jackson's account just because I don't want it that long. Or I'll just make it part two. But either a part two. Let's just say it's going to be a part two just because I really want to show what Jackson's account looks like. And if I am, if, if Jackson is at my place when I'm setting up his account, which is most likely not going to be that. I'll just pick either Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm going to pick either Spider-Man or the little PlayStation robot. Because those two are like the only thing I'm going to pick. It's the little robot and the PlayStation. Or this, <laughs> the Spider-Man. If I pick Spider-Man, he's going to be the little robot. If I pick the little robot, he's just going to be either Miles Morales or Spider-Man. Because... Because I'm going to go on a phone call with him and ask him which one, if I do pick the little robot, which I most likely do. Cool. Definitely feels nice overall. So if we go up, we got games, media, search, and settings. Let's go to settings, see what we got here. So yeah, pretty intuitive menu here. So lots of different. 
Oh yeah, also, I think it, you can actually do the same thing as the PS4 and set up a password on your account, which either is going to be the same thing or a different. I'm probably going to do a different or the same. Probably going to do the same. An option storage, so here's the important part, I guess. We have 667 GB left on the storage, which is not very much considering, you know, how big games are these days. But eventually when Sony lets us use the expandable storage, we should be able to upgrade quite easily. But for now, that's all we have. So yeah, you can pretty much control everything you need in the settings here, including your video outputs and refresh rates and things like that. So let's see if the Astros Playroom is a available to play it does say play here so let's click on it yeah i'm gonna make it a part two because they're gonna make my account and then actually play it and search it up how to make a new account on ps5 because i don't know how to because i don't think it's gonna be the exact same thing as the ps4 and open like the menu and then we'll ask you either to make an account or to choose an account see what happens Also guys, I wanted to mention that I'm not sure if my TV is adjusted exactly correct for this, but hopefully you guys be able to see on the video here that it does look really good. And if I click info on the TV, you guys can see that we are in 4K HDR 10. So we got all the goodness going. So let's press any button. He said that either three or four times already. He um, said it when he was setting up the PlayStation, um, saying said that when he was going through the settings in the tutorial and now he's saying it during when he's playing the playroom which i already know what the playroom looks like and what you can do on there um i'm just not going to spoil it spoil it for so Astro Playroom it really showcases how well this controller works and I've already hear it vibrating and you know the speaker on it is doing stuff so I am still plugged in. I don't know if I should be, maybe I'll go ahead and unplug. So let's go ahead and start the game. So it looks like we got a bunch of generations of PlayStations going through. Wow, that's pretty cool. So the adaptive triggers are the ones on the bottom, which is L2 and R2. Okay, so when you click it, you can feel it. There's a very believable feel to it. Wow, that's a very interesting sensation. Wow, pretty cool. It's such a nice feedback. So we got the touchpad on the top. And you can draw anything you want on it, obviously. And you can also click on it, obviously. But yeah. When I do get a chance to do that, I'm going to write my name on it just because it's fun. Very responsive. Like literally as I move it. Very cool. Okay, let's go to the next thing. All right, so here we have motion sense. Those Astros that fell inside the remote, you can actually feel them dangling inside. It feels like something inside is, there's something in there and it's wobbling around. That's funny how believable that is. Wow, they did a great job. I'm super impressed with this feature. Very cool. And also we do have a microphone that we can talk to now. All right, so we've got the PlayStation 5. So super nice presentation. Wow, guys, holding the remote really makes you feel. I, I don't know what to say. This is very impressive. I never thought that Sony would go this far. All right, so it looks like Astro's ready to go. Okay, so we're running around. So every step that Astro takes, you can feel it on the remote. Literally. All right, so X is to jump. All right, so let's get those coins there. So literally every step that I take, I can feel it on the remote. Okay, if we hold X, he actually has some laser flyers. And it comes through to the controller very well. 
Okay, so we need to chop this up with our lasers. There we go. Click the other one. So we're gonna click the box to hit with our hands. I don't know guys, I'm super impressed with this controller. When you talk about next generation, this is what next generation feels like. When there's something so unique and so new and something you can be excited about and it looks like the PlayStation 5 is definitely knocking it out of the park with this controller. All right, so here looks like we're gonna need to grab these little wires here. We're gonna press the box there and pull on them. There's actually going to be a part, there's going to be an actual part three. The part one is me setting it up and playing the playroom for a little bit. The second part is me setting up his account, or at least trying to figure out, like, searching it up and then reacting to the video depending on how long it is. Then the part three is making Jackson play this the first time that I show it to him. Or he watches my videos like usual. And you'll know that I got a PS5. So I can tell that the footage is definitely, or the game is, played at 60 frames. So it's very smooth. Once you go from 30 to 60, it's a huge difference. I know a lot of people talk about 120, but for the normal folks like myself and a lot of other console players, an upgrade from 30 to 60 is already a huge upgrade. Everything is just so much more smoother. So yeah, it looks like this is some kind of room here where you can... I guess choose what you want to play next. It's so nostalgic in here because they have all kinds of different PlayStations, whatever this thing is. So it looks like we can go in here and do something in here. I definitely appreciate how Sony included this game here to showcase the controller and just the capabilities of the new platform. So definitely not a disappointment here. And I know the kids will love playing this game. And what's interesting is even adults will enjoy this thing, especially having all that haptic feedback through the controller. All right, so I'm not going to spoil it anymore for you guys with this Astro Playroom. I'm sure this is a super cool, fun game, and we're definitely going to get on it here in a bit. But what I want to do next is I want to stick a PlayStation 4 game in here and see how that works. All right, so when we push this PlayStation button, we can see on the bottom here, we can choose where we want to go. So let's just go home. And what I want to try is Gran Turismo Sport. And the reason I want to try that is because... I told you guys that you can actually put a PS4 game in a PS5. So look how I said. When I do the tutorial, I'll put Hello Neighbor in and see if it downloads and see if I can play it on the PS5. It is a driving game, so there's a lot of movement in there. I'm not sure if I put the CD in the right way or not, but judging by the way it sits flat with the disc down, the picture goes up. Yep, that looks like it was correct. Okay, so it does look like yeah, we'll have to download a few things from the CD itself before we can even start it. So we're gonna have to wait. I guess while we're waiting, go back to the Astro Playroom and run around a bit. Let's just run into somewhere random here. Okay, so it looks like this is how you start a board. Okay, so to access the map, click this menu button here. Okay, so these are boards you can play. So I guess this is the first board here. All right. So I don't know if you guys will be able to hear on the mic. It's, it's picking up the water as I'm walking on it. So the controller is actually giving me different kinds of sounds. Like right now I'm walking on grass and it's giving me like this the grassy sound, I guess. And then when I hit stuff, it also makes, you know, noises there too. So there's a lot going on here with the vibrations and the sounds. All right, so here I think we need a pull probably. So it does give you a little hint on the left there what to do. All right, so now we got a little rope to walk on. If you guys can see, it's windy here, and the controller is making windy sounds. So I just want to say that you got to experience this game no matter where you're coming from. This is definitely a unique experience. Okay, that's... Am I supposed to help this guy somehow? I'm feeling like if I push the wrong button... Yep. Oh, wait, no. That's hilarious. Whoa! Okay. Wrong button, and I die. <laughs> And also, guys, I wanted to mention that the PlayStation itself is very quiet. Practically no sound coming from it. So the disc is spinning right now, and it's not loud either, but I'm going to bring my mic in so you guys can hear. So there's some air coming up here. I'm pretty sure when it gets too hot, the fan's going to turn on and making a lot of sounds. 
like how my PlayStation does. Because in some of my videos, you guys can tell that my PlayStation has a hard time cooling itself down. Sometimes it even shuts down. Overall, it's quite quiet. It's not like you can't hear it. Obviously, you can hear it, but mostly it's the disc right now. So overall, much quieter than the older systems. Once they heat up, they really start to rev up. And I would hope so for this large size that, you know, it's getting plenty of cooling as it needs. All right, so it didn't take long, and the GT Sport is ready to go. So let's go ahead and push play. Okay, so I guess it's updating something. So I'm just going to go ahead and wait till it's done, because I definitely don't want to confuse the system. I'll we'll just go ahead and enjoy some more of this Astro. Playroom. So this is restarting. And it doesn't take long to get going. I would say about 30 seconds from the start, which is not bad at all. All right, so the Gran Turismo has downloaded and started automatically on its own. Pretty much starting over here because I did not sign in into the account, but right off the bat, it looks really good. Now, I'm used to this game in the regular PlayStation, not the Pro, so this is probably going to look already a lot better than normal. Now, I'm filming in, unfortunately, 24 frames per second, so you guys are not going to see the smoothness of the motion, but I'll be able to tell you guys how smooth it is. All right, so let's just go to the arcade mode and do a single race, I guess. All right, let's just go with this alpha here. Red's fine. Automatic for now. So let's see how long this load time is going to be. Normally, this is a while. All right, well, that was pretty quick. So here's asking us what kind of steering we want to use. I guess we'll use the analog stick and the brake and acceleration on the bottom ones. Well, let's go ahead and start it. So you guys are not going to see, but I can tell you right off the bat here, it's smooth as butter. It's beautiful. Now, another thing is the remote is definitely not acting like it did in Astro's Playroom because it's, you know, not using that functionality. It only does the vibrations. That's about it. So I don't have any kind of haptic feedback or anything. So, okay, so let's change our view here. I guess we can be inside the vehicle. Look around. Plays very nice, actually. So yeah, as far as the picture quality, it looks really good. So it's probably not the best game to show off the PlayStation 5, but you know, it is an older title that I think would probably be played, especially while we're waiting for the new Gran Turismo game, and that's what I'm really excited about. Now, another thing that I'm really excited about is we do have the Logitech G923 with the true force feedback that should work very well with the PlayStation 5 and this game. So if you're interested in seeing that, stay tuned for for another video but yeah with that said guys i am really really impressed so far with the ps5 itself and the astro playroom is where it really shows what the console is capable of so i feel like if games can get to this level at least playability and control interaction i think we got something really amazing here with the playstation 5 so if the developers take their inspiration from this little Astro Playroom game, I think we would have a lot of excellent games for our enjoyment with this remote. And also the design is very unique and very interesting. So this thing really demands attention. Once you see it, you can't take your eyes off it because you're wondering what it is. And I know there's some people that don't like it, but it is what it is and you have to give it to them for pushing the envelope. I do wish it was a bit smaller, but as long as it performs and gives gives us years and years of enjoyment. It looks totally fine with me. And if you're doubting about the PS5, I'd have to confirm, but it's definitely everything that it's been hyped to be. Also guys, I forgot to mention that the controller has a dedicated button to mute the microphone. So once you click it, it turns orange and that actually mutes and it pops up on the screen that it's muted. So if you don't want your microphone to be on, you can mute it and you can actually go in the settings and default it to muted if that's what you want. But as far as the controller goes itself, it's a beautiful controller and 
and Sony did an excellent job with this next generation and with all the haptic feedback and what this thing can do this thing is awesome and I'm probably gonna pick up a second one because it's so good and there's more games now that you can play together so that's kind of cool so overall I'm really impressed and really like what I'm seeing and I can't wait to see more games that are gonna come out for this system so we're gonna put it through its paces and enjoy it and we're actually gonna make more videos so if you like this kind of content then stay tuned and if you enjoyed this video then hit that like button so thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one peace so I really enjoyed that video I hope you guys enjoyed it too it was just sitting here for a long time takes a lot of time and gets really pretty boring sure i might do it on my tv all the time but it's because i'm watching my own thing that i really do like and really enjoy i enjoyed the video and i enjoyed how he like yeah i'm like i'm i'm really surprised how good that video was i picked a really good video um and then i'm i'm just I'm just really ha I'm just really surprised that the PS5 can play PS4 games. Well, most of PS4 games. Some of them don't even work, depending on what game it is. But I don't know what games don't or do well. But like how I said, I'm gonna put Hello Neighbor in and see if it does work. Well, guys, I'm just gonna end the video here. Good bye, guys.